QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Bank Reconciliation, Bank Feeds, First Month. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off and the open windows are open on the left. Reports drop down, company financial. Let's open up the P and the L, the profit and the loss, the income statement, ranging, changing, 01012322 Then we will customize it go into the fonts and the numbers. I wanna bring it up to 14 as has been our custom. Okay, reports drop down again, company and financial, this time the balance sheet standard. Let's customize that report with a change of the range from 01022 to 123122 and fonts to the numbers also changing up to 14, okay yes and okay let's open the bank feed center go into the banking drop down the bank feeds looking at that bank feed center which you would only have if you had bank feeds turned on which we did in a prior presentation now we've added in the checking account that's what we're focused on here the data from the bank feed center from bank feed limbo which is what i call this area which is where the data would be before it had gotten the added information necessary to pull it through to the promised land of being creating the actual financial statements the added data we needed to add were things like the payee the customer and the account as we first added the data on the first month of um, information for example then we're going to have to have a lot more data input from bank feed limbo here to pull it into the creation of the financial statements but as we do so we could set up rules the rules making it a lot easier to pull that data into the system in the future now note if i go back to the home page that we talked about areas where the bank feeds fit in well and and where we what kind of of industries or companies we might have or businesses that we could use the bank feeds themselves to create the financial statements and you want to think about that oftentimes on cycle by cycle meaning for outflows and inflows kind of distinctly how are you going to manage the outflows how are you going to manage the inflows how do the bank feeds fit into it and we've tried to make most of our books here based on the concept of us having an industry where we can construct our financial statements directly from the bank feeds, meaning outflows using the bank feeds will generally create check forms. Inflows using the bank feeds will generally create uh, deposit types forms. And we're, we're not then in a situation where we have to have invoices dealing with the accrual account of accounts receivable or even sales receipts which will help us to kind of match up our, our cash register if we were on a cash based system, but instead wait on the deposit side, for example, until something clears the bank. And on the expense side of things, the general idea is we're not going to have accounts payable, but instead just used the check form. And so if we're waiting till things clear the bank in order to construct our financial statements, then it's going to be a lot easier once we get set up for us to do the bank reconciliations because in a full service bank reconciliation process you would have to first enter the data into your accounting system and then use the bank feeds and bank reconciliation to double check it's supposed to be an external verification giving you a double external check over the cash that double check over the cash also gives you verification for the other side of the transactions and that gives you a huge internal control however 
uh, if we're not entering the data in our side separately from the bank, but using the bank data to enter the data into our side, into our system, then the bank reconciliation is not going to help us to kind of give a double check in the same way. We lose a lot of that verification. However, it's still necessary to do something that you want to check because it'll help you to determine if you entered something twice, for example, or if you didn't enter uh, a transaction at all. So if I go over to the balance sheet, then let's change the date up here to the period end of 083122. Uh, the general idea of the bank reconciliation would be here's my checking account as of the cutoff date of the first bank statement, let's say. And we've got the first bank statement here. The ending amount is at 606996 This is a made up bank statement coming from the bank as of 83122. Now this amount does not match what is in our system. If we were doing a full service accounting system, we would expect it not to match because we would have outstanding checks and deposits that we would need to account for in the bank reconciliation process. Because we're constructing our books from the bank feeds, we would generally expect it to match as of the same date. Uh, so, But it's not matching in the first bank reconciliation because we have to enter that beginning balance. We've entered the data since the point in time that we started entering the transactions, but we're missing that first balance up top. In this case, we're gonna imagine that to be the $50,000 that we're gonna have to add into the system in some way to start to get lined up and then we should be good going forward, the bank reconciliation process being much easier. Now note, when you're, when you're checking the checking account, uh, with a bank reconciliation, it's not just about the cash because notice if I double click on the cash, we've got all the uh, the detail of the transactions here. I'll bring it back. Well, let's bring it 22 up to uh, 123122. All this detail is is going into another account as well. We've got the split account, the other side of the transaction. So the fact that cash is like the lifeblood of the company, the cash flow is involved in every cycle means that if we can verify all the transactions within cash, then we get a double check that the other side of the transactions are at least appropriately included. Like at least there is, uh, they've been added, right? So that's a huge internal control. We're not just trying to verify cash. The cash, if we can be confident of not just the ending balance, but all the activity in the cash account, then that gives us a huge internal control over everything else. So just remember, when you enter stuff into an accounting system, in my view as an accountant, if someone brings me their books and it's just on a piece of paper that's not really even reconciled, just like an income statement that I'm going to do their taxes with or something like that, I have very little confidence that their financial statements are actually you know, well done. You know, It might be good enough for taxes and whatnot, but you don't have the double entry accounting system in that case to really verify if we're using accounting software such as QuickBooks forcing us to be in balance, that forcing of assets equal liabilities plus equity, the double entry accounting system, is a huge internal control in and of itself. But if even if I get the information from somebody and it's in QuickBooks, if the reconciliation doesn't tie out, once again, I'm losing a lot of, of faith in the, in the fidelity of the financial statements. If they're using QuickBooks and having their reconciliations tie out, then my confidence level goes up greatly uh, in that case. So every business should probably reconcile, well, should reconcile big, small, whether you're depending on the financial statements to create your books or whether you're doing a full service accounting system. Okay, so that said, we're gonna say, how can we do the first reconciliation? Well, let's first just start it and see where that difference lies. So to do a bank reconciliation, we would go into the banking dropdown. We're going to go into the reconcile item and I'm going to do the checking account. Notice we can reconcile the checking account and the credit card accounts. And I'm going to reconcile here as of 083122. Notice the beginning balance is not here. That's a problem because on our bank statement, we have a beginning balance. There's a couple ways you might deal with that. One, I could close this out I could go to the lists drop down chart of accounts and I could go into the checking account here, right click and edit it, edit the, the account. And I could try to increase uh, an opening balance right here. 
Now, if I've already started the business, I don't really like doing that because what this will do, if I increase the checking account from a double entry accounting standpoint, QuickBooks will have to put another side to the transaction somewhere. And I'm, I would just guess where they would put that. If I close this out, for example, go to the balance sheet, how is this going to remain in balance if QuickBooks increases the cash account by $50,000 in asset? Well, the other side's going to go into most likely this opening balance equity account. Now, I, I posted something in there for an example, but that doesn't look that professional to have stuff in opening balance equity. So, so if you post to opening balance equity, that's okay, but you probably then at some point want to make a journal entry taking it out of opening balance equity, applying it out to the owner's equity or something like that. So, so I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to add the transaction myself uh, into the system, and we'll talk more about how to do that in a second. Banking dropdown, reconcile. Let's go back in here. I'm going to make this as of 083122. So the fact that I don't have that beginning balance will be okay with the bank reconciliation because I'm just going to add that beginning balance as one of the items that I check off, and therefore it's going to be grouped in just for the first time in this additions area, which will look a little funny, but it'll be okay. And then going forward, everything will work out fine. The ending balance is what's on the bank statement. So that's going to be the 60,066996. So 60996, what was it? 60669. 60, uh, 60669. Why does it have to be all nines and sixes here? It's driving nine six. Nine six. Okay, it's easier if you have these things side by side. I, now I feel I'm, I'm, I'm not confident that I got my nines and six. That's okay. That looks good. So then you've got the service charges and interest earned. I don't like using these most of the time because I would rather enter them myself. I think it actually kind of confuses things when you're posting stuff as you reconcile. That number one. And number two, if you're imagining the situation that we are in, that we enter the data directly from the bank feeds, then the bank feeds will have picked up the service charges and the interest earned so we don't really need them in that instance so i'm just going to continue and then i'm going to uncheck everything that's after the date here notice that if i was doing a full service accounting system we would be entering items on our side separate from the bank if for example i wrote a check i would write it today it wouldn't clear the bank until some point in the future so notice that there's no possible way that something could have entered into the bank on a date you know before <laughs> we knew about it we knew about it first and then the bank knew about it so i can hide confidently everything that's after the cutoff date even if i'm using a full service accounting system now in our case we put everything in our system we're going to imagine from the bank that means that our dates will tie out exactly to what's on the bank statement because we waited till the things cleared the bank before recording them. So, so normally then, if I had the bank feed set up, I could just use this check all because like I say, we put all of our data in place from uh, the bank. So it should tie out exactly. And so what we're really looking for when we do the bank reconciliation is for us to have entered something two times or not entered something at all. If on the other hand, we were doing a full service accounting system, we would have to tick and tie, I'm gonna unmark them, I'd have to tick and tie each of these items out. So let's just kind of give a quick recap on that. The beginning balance, we're gonna to have to deal with that shortly. That's our first bank reconciliation kind of issue. We've got the additions and the subtractions, increases and decreases to the checking account, which are detailed down here below. Now, because we we're, we're have a system where all of our transactions are electronic, then the bank statement is going to have all the detail on it in, in a similar fashion as we saw in the bank feeds. It'll have the date. It'll probably have a description for it that was given through the electronic transfer and the amounts that will be increasing and uh, decreasing. Uh, if, on the other hand, we had items that were not electronic, meaning, for example, I deposited cash into the bank directly with just a cash deposit, well, then all the bank has is the date and the amount of the cash deposit here if on the on the other side i wrote a physical check then what the system has is a date that it cleared not the date we wrote the check the check number the amount 
you might be able to then check the cancel check, but that's what would typically be on the bank statement. Also just note that because we have bank feeds and things like that, when we think about the bank statements, we, we often think, well, those are irrelevant now because I have the bank feeds, which gives me all my data real time. But the bank statements are still quite important because you want the cutoff. The cutoff is gonna be important because I wanna check my numbers periodically as of a specific point in time. The bank statements give you a, a clear delineation between mo one month and another month. So when I roll forward, like from the end of this month to the beginning of next month, this ending number will match the beginning number for the next month. So that's gonna be an com important component. If I was using a full service accounting system, entering say checks, handwriting the checks, sending those checks out to someone else to cash, then, then when I enter the check into the system separate from the bank feeds, if I actually wrote a physical check, entered it into the system, then I would have it in my system before the bank knew about it. And the, there'd be a significant difference in dates between when I wrote the check and when it cleared the bank because, because someone else is gonna have to receive the check and then deposit it and so on. So that's when the, the, the reconciliation full service accounting system is really important because you're gonna end up with these timing differences of outstanding checks and deposits. We're not gonna have any outstanding checks and deposits because again, we're imagining we constructed our financial statements from the bank, waiting until everything cleared the bank and then using the bank feeds to record our accounting system and checks don't really fit into that very well. Electronic transfers fit into that kind of system uh, quite well because there's the, you don't have that same time constraint between when we actually purchased a, something and when it cleared if you're doing electronic transfers. Okay, so now we still got that beginning balance problem. So if I check all of these off, for example, if I, if I say my bank reconciliation, I check all of these off, ticking and tying each one of them, uh, then I'm still out of balance by, you can see 50,000 right here. So this is kind of a recap of everything that's, that's been checked off. The beginning balance does not tie out, but my deposits are now at 13,598.25. 13,598.25 and the the total checks are at 2,928.29 so that's correct I'm just missing the beginning balance which is of course the 50,000 I'm going to enter that into the register now if I go to my balance sheet what's going to be the impact on the balance sheet well the cash account needs to go up by 50,000 which is the beginning balance the amount that was in there before I started adding the bank feeds the other side typically shouldn't be going to revenue because we're going to imagine when you do your accounting system and you start a new accounting system, then typically you want to have a cutoff date from the prior period to the current period. The cutoff date should usually be, be the beginning of the year. So if you started your new accounting system in January, then you want to make your first beginning balance entries like the day before January possibly, so that your everything is, is lined up as of January for the balance sheet. And so, uh, or if you started a new company file and you're the one that put in the 50,000 into the business checking account, then it would go into an equity account, which would be like an investment type of account. It wouldn't be income would be the point. So how can we put that in here? I can go to the list drop down chart of accounts. Let's double click on the checking account. I'm going to add a transaction. I'm going to imagine I put it in there, you know, the, the month before the month that I'm in. So I'll say this is as of, let's say, uh, 09 or what was it? Oh, oh, seven, uh, 3122. And I'm not going to have a number to it. I'm going to say it's a deposit of 50,000. The other side is not going to go to an income statement account, but rather an equity account. That being the main point, if you entered the beginning balance through QuickBooks, it would put it into opening balance equity. That's not a very professional account though. You can either put it into investments. If you're the one that put it in, as in a beginning balance, or if it's a result from prior, the prior accounting system, then it would be part of equity, right? It would be part of the equity. Equity represents, I mean, owner's equity. Owner's equity or retained earnings, if it were a corporation, represents the accumulation of earnings that you have not yet uh, distributed out in the form of draws or dividends if it was a corporation. This investment account would be us putting money into the business, which isn't always there. We don't always track that because hopefully we're taking money out of the business. 
but you could track that as a separate equity. I'll put it into there. The point is it needs to be some kind of equity account. So then if I record that and go back into our balance sheet, we're going to say, okay, now the checking account has been increased. If I bring this back a day, boom, by the, I put it in, did it, where did it go? Increased, did I put it in there as of like last year or something? Yeah, I put it in there at, there it is, 731.22. Okay, that's right, right, yeah. So then if I close that back out, and I go back to my record, and the other side I put into equity. So now it's it's in equity, the owner's investment here. So if I bring this back to 010122, so there's the 50,000, okay? So it doesn't affect the income statement. Now I can reconcile bank fee, bank reconciliation. I've got that added amount. Notice it doesn't, it's not gonna be up here in the beginning balances the way I did it, but I could still just check it off and now it'll be in the deposits, making this item go to zero, which means that our cleared balance matches our uh, Indian balance. Now, uh, so in our case, there's no difference. So, so this process here is the bank reconciling process. If we had a full service accounting system, we would expect there would still be a difference between the Indian balance here, the 606996 and what's on our balance sheet as of the same date, there's not a difference here anymore because we're not using a full service accounting system. We're depending on the bank. Therefore, there's no timing differences. There's no outstanding checks and deposits. So th that's going to be a big difference between your bank reconciliation processes, to, you know, just to be aware of. And so that's going to be the cleared uh, balance. If this item is not at zero, this difference, then you should be able to go back up here and find tick and tie off everything one by one. Each of the transactions go in there one by one, tick and tie them off, find what the difference is. Because if you plug the difference, which you can do, if this was off, like I didn't have something ticked off and I reconcile, I could force it to reconcile by saying enter an adjustment. But even though you might say, well, it's only off by a few dollars, so I'm just gonna do that. You could do that, but the fact that this is only off by a few dollars uh, might might be due to the fact that there's like 10 deposits and 15 checks that haven't been entered, which combine together to be off by a few dollars. And remember, we're not just trying to verify where the Indian balance is on the checking account. We're trying to double check all the detail of the transactions as well, 1231.22. We're trying to see that all this has been entered correctly, the detail because that shows that all the rest other side of the transactions are correct. So if you if you fudge or or uh, force a reconciliation, even a small one, the amount of internal control that you're getting from reconciling goes way down. So and you should be able to figure it out because it has to work, right? Because you built this from the bank feed. So you could figure out what the difference is by just ticking and tying them off and then make the adjustment necessary. So if I reconcile this, Let's go ahead and reconcile it. It generates the reports, so I can make the reports and display the reports. In our case, the reports aren't as helpful. I'm looking at both the reports now. I'm gonna customize them and say, we wanna bring this up to, let's say 16. So so notice in, in this system, there's no difference between our cleared balance, which is basically the bank statement balance and the book balance, the amount on the balance sheet as of the cutoff date, because we constructed our financial statements from the bank feeds. But in a full service accounting system, you'll recall there will be a difference between the two. And therefore, that's what the reconciliation will be. So this reconciliation is kind of boring. There's not much going on with it. Because this top half is really a recap of what's on the bank statement, which we already have, right, it's right here, except for the 50,000 due to the first bank reconciliation has been included here in this line item instead of in the beginning balance which will not be the case next time there's our ending balance for the cleared balance which represents what we checked off in the system which should match the bank statement and then the register balance is what's on the balance sheet they're the same and the reconciliation is usually the the reconciling between these two numbers which mean which would normally be outstanding checks those we wrote that haven't cleared the bank yet and outstanding deposits deposits we've made that haven't cleared the bank yet. 
There are none because we're waiting till they clear the bank before we record them. And then down here, we've got the new transactions, which aren't really necessary for a bank reconciliation as well. If I close this out, then we've got the reconciliation detail, which is basically, I'm just going to increase the size again. Let's make this one 14. The same stuff, uh, but it gives you the, the detail of the checks, which again, we already have the detail up top. Then the bank reconciliation to me really starts right here with the cleared balance. Uh, so you got the cleared balance and then the register balance. But there's nothing between these two. If there were, they would be outstanding checks and deposits. And you really want to have, if there was a difference, the detail report. Because if you were to give this to, say, an auditor and there was a difference be due to outstanding checks and deposits, you want to know what the outstanding checks and deposits are. And, and if you use the summary report, it's just going to say, hey, there's six outstanding checks and two outstanding deposits. So that's not helpful. I need to know what those are so that we can then, you know, test and see if those are real <laughs> checks and deposits and whether or not they cleared in the following time frame. So if I close this out, just also realize that if I close this out and I go back into the banking again and I go into my, my banking reports and look at the previous reconciliation, I can only get back to the previous one. Uh, and, and, so, and it also opens up in like a PDF file. So they're a little bit different because this is not a report that's normal, like a normal report, which is actually being constructed as we do the data input. This is an internal control double check report verifying our numbers, comparing them to an external uh, person or institution, the bank. Also note, if there was something wrong with the bank reconciliation, you would have to, you could fix it or you'd have to undo the prior bank rec, which you could go to the banking and you can go to reconcile and you can undo the prior bank rec and then do it again if it was necessary to, to do that. Also note that if you do have out differences between the register and the bank due to outstanding checks and deposits, you might want to print out the bank reconciliations so that if there's an issue in the future, someone deletes something, you have the hard copy and you can compare the hard copy to what uh, is currently in the system and try to figure things out from there. Uh, next time we'll do another bank reconciliation and going forward from here, the bank reconciliations should be really easy because if your checking account kind of ties out to what's on the bank, then you can just go into the bank reconciliation and just check everything off. And that, But it's still something that you want to do because it'll give you that double check that, that you have entered everything from the bank feeds and have not double entered into anything or have not uh, entered any or have not missed anything that has been entered. So it's still a useful tool, although it doesn't give you as much internal control as it would if you had a full service accounting system in which you were doing your own accounting without the bank and then using the bank as a double check uh, over what you've done. Uh, so th those are the differences between the two. We've got a whole nother section or a course on bank feeds and a full service accounting system. If you want to check that out and dives into to outstanding checks and deposits in more detail.